Well, welcome to Equipping Hour. This morning is going to be a, a little non-traditional as we're going to spend some time uh, sharing information with you all regarding our plans, the elders' plans for a church plant in Gilbert. And I want to just begin our time with, some, uh, with prayer. So would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you for Christ and what he has accomplished. We thank you for the reconciling work through the cross to both reconcile us godless, helpless sinners to you, but also to reconcile us one with another and to call us into the body, into a church, into your church. And the joy and the privilege that it is to be joined with one another, united in mind and heart and purpose, to desire above all else to glorify you and to participate in your work in this world, Lord. These things are too wonderful for us, and we are humbled and grateful. We are awed that you would allow us to participate in such things. Lord, we're encouraged by the work that you have been doing at Grace Bible Church. Thank you for growing saints in holiness and maturity. And Lord, we're thankful for the consideration and plans for this endeavor that we have before us. And we, play, we pray that you would go before us in it. And Lord, that we would humbly yield to you in all things and that we would be pleasing to you in every step of the process. Lord, we pray that you would be pleased to use our efforts for your glory in the world. We pray that Grace Bible Church would be strengthened in this endeavor and matured all the more. And Lord, that the progress of being able to raise up, draw in and raise up and build up and send out would just continue and continue. And we pray, Lord, that as we plant a church in the Southeast Valley, that that church would be fruitful as well. That as we're sent, we would then draw in and build up and continue to send out as your gospel goes forth in this world. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give to us wisdom beyond what we would ever have on our own, that you would give us discernment and steadfastness to, to press forward in faithfulness and patience and godliness Lord, that you would accomplish the work that you desire through us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, as I shared a few moments ago, this morning's going to look a little bit different for our equipping hour. And what I really want to do is just share with you the elders' thoughts, plans uh, for a church plan. About five weeks ago, six weeks ago, this is the sixth week, um, you got a snippet from the front that we had plans to plant a church in the Southeast Valley. And for some, that was a complete surprise out of the blue. Oh, really? That's on our, that's on our radar. For others, uh, that wasn't a surprise at all. Uh, the elders have had on our hearts, on our minds to uh, multiply, to replicate, and to plant a church in the valley, and particularly in the Southeast Valley, for some 15 years. So there's a spectrum of how that was received, and we understand that, and we're thankful, especially for your patience, because as the elders planned and have been praying and considering what this might look like, regardless of all of the logistical details, what we cannot waver in are the things that you've heard the last five weeks. And so we really wanted to put that before us as a body, the entire church body, to stay our hearts on what is most important before the Lord, on what the greatest priorities should be. And so six weeks ago, Smed started and preached through um, our missions grid. And he talked about the definition of missions, that it's the glory of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ manifested in the church around the world. And that missions must be doxological and Christological, ecclesiological and global. And even as we consider a church plant, that is what we are seeking to do. We are seeking to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And we've participated in this endeavor intentionally as a church over the years. 
We have several missionaries, just thinking particularly of the team in Papua New Guinea, who have labored and labored to learn the language and present the gospel and translate the Bible in the Do language. And it's wonderfully encouraging. But we also have had on our hearts and minds to send out locally and expand in our more immediate proximity. And the Lord has been kind to give us a significant portion of our church that actually lives in the Southeast Valley, which positions us well to plant where there is particularly a need. And I talked about that a few weeks ago. We also saw from Ephesians 4, God's blueprint for the church. And this is absolutely essential as we seek to be the church and plant more churches. That we understand God's intention, the, the provision from the Lord and the truth of his word and gospel heralds and pastor teachers within the body. As we understand the purpose of the Lord's provision, the equipping of Christians for ministry to bring about unity and knowledge and maturity in Christ. And we see that so clearly from Ephesians 4, how God uses the church, the body, the members of the church connected with one another to grow the body. And it was a wonderful exhortation for us to, to examine if we are functioning properly within the body of Christ. And this is absolutely essential, whether or not we plant a church in the coming time frame that we're anticipating or not, this is a mandate from the Lord that we need to be functioning properly in the body of Christ. And the fact that we're even able to consider such an endeavor as planting a church is evidence of God's grace in you all, that you are functioning in the body as God intends. You are maturing, and the Lord is building us up through the collective efforts of the members of this church. <laughs> I shared a little bit after that about various factors leading to the church plant and really talked about the goal, which is to please the Lord. That's our aim. Not to preserve relationships, not to remain comfortable in our current setting, but to please the Lord, to do what would honor him, and, and particularly to conduct ourselves in a manner that honors him. And how do we do that? Well, we imitate Jesus. We have in us the attitude that was in Christ. We humble ourselves, considering others' needs above our own, and we follow Christ. We heard from John priorities for church planning, and we saw from Matthew 16 that Christ is building a holy church and the importance of personal holiness and conduct. And we saw from Acts 4 that the actual power of the church is in its purity, how God uses his word conjoined with his spirit working in the lives of believers, producing sanctification in their lives and greater degrees of holiness, and that that purity within the body is what catapults us into usefulness and brings about power and that as we seek this endeavor we need to be mature in the lord faithful diligent functioning properly again thinking back to ephesians 4 and then we heard from omri his wonderful sharing from god's word that we must consider the inseparable connection between three of the church's chief burdens and the burden of the church for our conduct, God's reputation, and God's truth. And even as we talk about the details that I want to share with you in a few moments, letting our hearts resonate with that being our priority. Our conduct, God's reputation, God's truth. And in each of these considerations, I want to draw attention that the emphasis isn't ultimately on the details with the, the fine details of the church plant, or even ultimately if you go with the church plant or if you stay, but on our willingness to yield to the Lord in this, to be what God calls us to be, to embrace faithfully his mandate for the believer, to be in the church, to serve sacrificially, to encourage one another, to pursue holiness for his glory and for the mutual mutual edification of one another. So, 
That's a quick recap and reminder of where we've been. And now I want to transition to probably the information. You're like, hey, we've spent six weeks hearing all of that. Get to the Get to the good stuff, Josh. Get to the details. We want to know. We've been waiting. And I, and I do just, I'll get there in just a moment. But I, I do, on behalf of the elders, just want to commend you. The amount of self-control to hear and sit under what you've heard and crave it and long for it and embrace it and be patient with all of the questions that have been racing through your mind is just a wonderful evidence of God's work in you and thank you. Thank you for listening so well. Thank you for your patience. And now what I want to do is I, I want to transition and just share some of the details of what the elders have in mind. And as we do that, uh, I want you to consider Proverbs 16, 9. I want to start with this. Proverbs 16, 9. It says, the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And that is going to be absolutely true for the elders as we press forward. And the elders understand that that is absolutely true for all of the participants of Grace Bible Church, all of the members of Grace Bible Church. We are going to have plans and we're going to talk through different expectations and, and goals. And yet all of them are subject to divine approval. And so... It's going to be a good opportunity to be patient with one another as we press forward, seeking to intentionally be faithful before the Lord and yet hold our plans with an open hand and uh, eagerness to submit to the Lord in these things. So with that in mind, as we consider the plan, the goal is this. We want two autonomous churches, two elder boards, two separate churches with a profound like-mindedness and unity and ministry that will allow for a sweet partnership within the valley. We also recognize that the path to get there may require a long runway, and we'll have to work through all the details of what that looks like financially and ministry-wise as we move towards that. But that's the goal, that we would have two autonomous churches, two separate elder boards, and yet a sweet unity and partnership in ministry within the valley. The elder leadership team, we desire to um, not send one elder, but a, a group of elders. And those elders that we are uh, planning to send include Tom Engstead, Matt Kelso, and myself, and then Kyle Frazee as an elder intern, Lord willing. Kyle is currently working through an elder internship application, and our plan is to employ Kyle here at Grace Bible Church starting in September. And then uh, he'll eventually, as we plant the church, be employed by the church plant and freed up to minister as an elder intern and serve on the uh, leadership team as well. So Tom, Matt, and myself, we will um, be functioning in the same framework that we do here as a leadership team. I will be the, the primary preaching, teaching elder, but our elder model will remain the same that we hold to at Grace Bible Church. And the elders of the church plant will function, un, function under unanimity as we do as an elder board here um, currently. So that's the, the elder leadership team. We also have a plan for what it would look like to send a group of people here. And as we've considered, how do we plant well with a, a group of believers who are able to day one join together and function intentionally as the church and yet, and yet not overly tax Grace Bible Church in the maturity that God has been producing here and causing in the lives of one another here at Grace Bible Church and even considering a lot of the ministry that we have labored hard for years to build up and, and be able to enjoy and benefit from and see fruit from. Uh, we've, we've talked about, okay, so what does that look like? And you heard Smed talk about, we don't want to split the oak and then potentially have both church, the Grace Bible Church and the church plant suffer. Um, but is there a way that we could have a, a healthy pruning within Grace Bible Church that would send a sapling that would be able to grow and flourish and yet open up needs and send well from here so that we don't overly tax. And, and the, 
the amount that we think we could do both of those things well is sending something like 100 to 150 people, both adults and children, in the church plant. So Grace Bible Church currently has about, I think, is it 800? Did I see on the list? 800 people, adults and children, that would call Grace Bible Church their home. On a given Sunday, we'll have somewhere between 450 to 575 on campus. And, and that's pretty, that's actually fairly high for those that would say this is their church home in light of sickness and traveling and commitments and different things like that. That average of how many people we have on campus versus um, how many would, would attest to this being their church is, is actually a pretty high average that we have in attendance on, on Sundays. And so if you think about that, if we had 150 of those people calling, or 100, somewhere in there, calling the church plant their church home, um, that would create more space here to draw in and build others up, but not be overly jarring to what we have as a church. And to send 100 to 150 people actually sends us with the amount of people we had at our church 18 years ago, after we kind of went through... Um, uh, a cleansing process that the Lord had for us where we were planted. We grew quickly. Our pastor stepped down and, um, and we had about a hundred people left, hundred and 130 people left. And, uh, and then look at what the Lord has done here, 18 years of, of faithful ministry and has grown us to where we are. And what's interesting is at that stage in our church's life, we had far more obstacles to overcome and to work through as 130 people at that point than what it will look like to plant 130 mature, thriving, committed, not just been through the ringer um, believers with the, the church plant. And so that's what we're thinking. Um, if, if the Lord provided 80 people to go, depending on those people, and if the needs were met, we're, we're gonna go and we're gonna plant. If 200 people want to go or 250 people want to go, well, then we're going to need to slow down and, and think through that and think through about that cost and how to navigate that and uh, the implications. And maybe even sit with some of you that are thinking you want to go um, and just maybe reevaluate those reasons and, and try to refine that because we don't want to overly tax uh, Grace Bible Church in, in what we would send. So that's what we're thinking in regards to leadership, in regards to the amount of people that we would send out. Um, location. I want to talk about the location just a little bit. We have some, some broad parameters that we're working from because we're investigating what's out there. We don't have a location currently. Here's where we're planning to meet. But we have a range that we're investigating, and Kevin Barry has been helping us look into some different options and um, investigating various facilities. And, uh, and so we're looking at that. The, the location is the South Gilbert area. The parameters that we've given to Kevin to look for is Arizona Avenue to Higley along the South 202 within a couple miles from the freeway, two or three miles from the freeway, with a preference to go farther south than farther north. So if that makes sense, if you're thinking about that range, Arizona Avenue feels close, and we probably won't be in a building at Arizona Avenue, but at some point we've gotta draw some boundaries, and we didn't wanna just discredit if the perfect location came up that we could get into, and it was between Arizona Avenue and McQueen, we'll look at it and prayerfully consider it. But probably more along the Lindsay to Higley area would be ideal, I think, um, within a couple miles from the South 202. Again, preferring to uh, go farther south and openness to go more south than, no, than more north. So there would be a greater hesitancy to go to Gilbert Road and Warner than maybe Gilbert Road and Chandler Heights. But we're looking in that area. Does that make sense? So 
Um, we are looking, we've looked at a couple different locations. The reality is, as we consider this endeavor and we're weighing the financial implications and a lot of those unknowns, it, it makes a lot of sense that we'll most likely be in a weekend rental as a church plant, um, maybe a school, something like that. So those of you who remember Roadrunner Cafe at Gilliland uh, or remember Tempe High and the auditorium and the lecture hall, uh, probably something along those lines. Hopefully something with a more reliable air conditioner than the air conditioner at Tempe High's auditorium. Um, but we'll, we'll trust the Lord with that. And so, you know, trailers and the work that goes into being a mobile church, uh, the Lord is going to um, utilize the experience of overseeing setup and teardown for years that I had to step back into that um, after the little sabbatical of being here that I've, I've been able to enjoy. And, and uh, there's a sweetness to that. I, I remember just the intimacy that we developed as a church serving in that way. And obviously we gain that intimacy in other ways here now with our facility, but um, that's what we're looking at. And uh, price-wise, that will most likely be the most uh, attainable endeavor, something, something along those lines. So that's the location. Target date. Um, Want to talk about that. Obviously, all of our plans are subject to divine approval. Um, we would love to be able to plant in early 2022. But there's a lot of things outside of a specific time goal that have to be accomplished before we can plant. And so we're not viewing this as here's the time frame and that's going to drive us. And hey, if we're ready or not, we got to accomplish this at, by January or February of 2022. And so, you know, get on board. Here we go. That's, that's not at all how we're thinking about this. But a, a timeline would be helpful. We have a lot of things in place, leadership-wise, philosophy of ministry, doctrine, biblical convictions, and I'll talk about these things in just a moment. A lot of those things, um, we have qualified leadership. We have, and we're ready to send. And so the things that we're working through to get there are things like a location, um, some of the the understanding who's going, the holes that are left, how to fill those holes well here at Grace Bible Church, how to plan to be able to plant the various, um, with the various ministries that will be necessary from day one to do that well. Those are a lot of the things that we need to um, line up before we can plant. We think the early part of next year is a reasonable goal. If we're not ready to do it well by January, then we'll keep Keep plugging away and aim for February. And if we're not able to do it well by February, we'll keep plugging away and we'll aim for March. But that's, that's kind of the, the time frame that we're aiming at. So we're driven by necessary tasks over specific time. Coordination of mini various ministries, filling holes, uh, location, initial equipment, things like that. The name. What will the church plant name be? We don't know yet. Uh, we're working on that. We're considering that. The goal is two autonomous churches. And so whatever the name is, we want there to be clarity in regards to, to that reality. Um, and we'll let you know. We'll let you as, as we know. Right now, uh, I, think, I think we were, I was talking with somebody and we came up with uh, TCP, the church plant. <laughs> So we'll just refer to it as that for now, the TCP, the church plant. Um, we're working on it. We'll keep you posted. But I, but I figured I'd put that in there because I thought you might ask or, or be curious about that. So we don't know. We'll keep working and we'll let you know once we know. All right. Uh, a little bit about the church plant. The church plant will hold to these same things. If you're wondering, okay, what, what is that going to look like? Is, the, is it going to be different? Is there something that that Tom Engstead has been just dying to change at Grace Bible Church, and he can't wait to go do that in the church plant. If you've been wondering that, the answer is no, <laughs> there's not. Matt, however, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, uh, vision and purpose. We're, ju we're just lockstep in all of these things, which makes this, this plan so exciting to think about the ability to churches 
in close enough proximity to benefit from one another's ministries and far enough to enable the drawing in process and building up of people within the valley to be able to minister in their immediate communities. I mean, it is just thrilling to think about um, how God is designing, has designed this and the, the unity of the elders in this, the manner in which we're planting. I know, um, uh, Smed had went through a list of all these reasons why people might plant and send off pastors. And it was like, nope, that's not us. Nope, that's not us. Nope. And just to marvel in the kindness of the Lord to give us the kind of unity that we have over the years and to be able to plant in this way where we can look at things like our vision and purpose, our doctrinal statement, our biblical convictions, our philosophy of ministry, our commitment to train men and equipment for ministry, to disciple men and women within the church, to have family ministries that seek to grow young ones and come alongside family and their care for their, for their young ones. It's just, it's just exhilarating. I mean, it's just, just thrilling. And there's, there's nothing other than just thanking God and praising him for that. But just to say what, what feels obvious to us, to all of you, there are shared commitments to all of these things, both in the elders that are going and the elders that are remaining. Uh, there's complete unity on all of those things. None of those things have changed and and so I um, just wanted to share that, share that with you if you were wondering what, what that might look like. As far as um, service structure, different things like that, ministry forms, ultimately the, the ministries that we have at Grace Bible Church, or particularly the programs that we have at Grace Bible Church, are intentionally developed to serve the sheep of Grace Bible Church and equip the saints for the work of ministry. So... As far as the church plant, we need to know our sheep. We have no desire to reinvent the wheel. And yet, as we know our sheep, the programs that we have as a church are going to be for the purpose of equipping the saints there for the work of ministry. And the same types of priorities and convictions and discipleship emphasis that we have here is going to be present at the church plant. Uh, but what is that going to look like day one? We, we don't know yet. We're working, we're working that out. We'll have to figure that out. As far as an NGM, student ministries, family ministries, things like that, small group, we, we, we have to have those things. We want those things, and we'll be laboring to get there as, as quickly as possible. Okay, we're going to keep moving here. I want to talk about this survey. I mentioned last week that we are going to be sending out a survey. Just a, a full disclosure I don't personally like surveys, and it was my idea. So you can blame me if you don't like surveys too, and we can complain about it together. Um, I'm joking, obviously. But, but as we contemplated, how do we gauge where the body's at in this in a way that helps us understand what you're thinking as we're planning, we, we didn't have a better idea. And so we're gonna be sending out just a, a brief survey to gauge what you all are thinking. How are you thinking um, about the church plant? And we fully understand that for the last six weeks, we've told you, you don't need to make a decision, just listen. We have more information coming. And now we're giving you that information and saying, and tell us what you're thinking. <laughs> I understand the irony in that, okay? This survey is not a final sign up. We're not holding anybody ultimately to this. But what we want to do is we just want to hear what's on your heart, where, where you're at at this point. And if you were to answer in the survey, and I'll, and I'll show you what it's actually going to have on it in just a moment. But if you were to say, hey, we're planning on going, and a month from now something changes, and you're not, that's okay. Just, just tell us. Let us know. Keep us in the loop. And, um, and that, that'll be helpful for us. If you're not sure yet. Uh, that's okay as well, and there will be an opportunity to indicate that. This isn't a final commitment, but it helps the elders just know where the body's at. And so we're going to send out that survey in the next day or two. You'll receive an email through CCB. So if you don't get it by Wednesday, contact the church office, or maybe before you even do that, check your spam, because sometimes it'll go there. But everybody in our database should get this survey, it'll come through CCB. There will be a link. You'll click on the link. It'll have a number of questions. We want to send it out shortly so that you can just look at it and see what's in it. 
but we're going to give you about a week to fill it out. Um, you can contact any of the elders if you'd like to, to chat about that. And again, if, you're, if, if that's too fast for you and you're just not ready to answer, there's going to be um, a, a part to indicate to that, that you're undecided and to share just kind of where you're at, what you're thinking, what information would be helpful with where you're at in this process. So it's not a final commitment. It's to help us understand. It will help the elders gauge the various desires of those at Grace Bible Church as we weigh the cost of a plant and shepherd the body accordingly. Uh, what, what questions will it have? Your name, how many people are in the family, and then uh, this. So there'll be different... What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six different options. Okay. The first one, hey, we're, we're planning to stay. We're planning to stay at GBC. We prefer to stay, but we're willing to go. If you twist our arm, we're open to that, but we're planning to stay. We're willing to stay or go. Where's the need? Let us know. We prefer to go, but we're willing to stay. We're planning to go or undecided. Now, here's what I would ask. If you are... 80% sure that you as a family want to go. Hey, we, we really want to go. We're 80% sure, but we just want to give it more time to sit on it. Um, put planning to go. Don't put undecided. Put planning to go, and there will be a comment, an opportunity for comments. And you can indicate, hey, we're, we're planning to go, but we're about 80% right now, and we're just still considering. You can just type, type that in, something like that. Um, but if you're just, we just have no clue. We, we really are, are struggling to know what we want to do, or we just, we don't make decisions this quickly. We're undecided, put undecided. But we're just trying to gauge a general idea of where people are at with this. We're also, um, in this survey, we're not soliciting people to come, and we're not particularly soliciting people to stay. So this isn't a plea to sign up for the church plant, okay? That, that's not what the survey is as well. I just want to make that really clear because sometimes you have a survey and it's like, are you coming? And I'm up here, I'm going, hey, you guys coming with me? Well, I am as eager and committed and determined that we need people to stay as go. We have to. Grace Bible Church has to be able to continue to do what it's done so faithfully with people like me and my brother, as Tom has labored, and, and the other elders, and Kyle, and others who will be coming. And it, it, we need to be able to continue what we're doing and, and what we've done with Omri and other men in TES and so on in various leadership positions. So this isn't a plea or a petition um, well, I just always figured I'd stay, but man, there's a survey. Maybe I should go. They're asking me to go. That's not what we're doing right now. Um, hopefully, there will be a much larger percentage of people that say, yep, we're committed to staying. That's, that's, where, we, that's where we must be. Um, we need that. We need a larger commitment to those to stay than we need to go. But for those that are planning to go, we need to hear that as well as we plan and, and navigate the cost of that and how to, how to manage that and, and care for the flock in that. Okay. What should we be doing to prepare? First of all, pursue active obedience to faithful body life. Um, just keep being the body faithfully. And really this endeavor, hopefully for all of us has just caused us to kind of do some personal inventory and self-evaluation, uh, am I functioning as God intends within the body? And if so, great, keep on, excel still more, keep doing that. And maybe for some of us, we've gone, you know what, I just kind of, I just kind of show up and leave and I benefit, but I'm not really pouring myself out and benefiting others. And this is a good kind of reminder for us that that body life in the church is, is actually about far more than just receiving but using what God has given to us and stewarding that in a way that glorifies God and benefits the body and builds one another up. There, there will be a need for all of us to collectively um, absorb the cost of this, kind of, of this kind of endeavor, both in those going um, and, and in those staying. And so 
Uh, don't let your foot off the pedal and just serving faithfully at Grace Bible Church. Also, if you're planning to go, don't step back from body life or ministry within Grace Bible Church because we're planning to plant and I don't want to, I don't want to get, you know, caught up in something and then have to leave. No, take build, take Wellspring, join the trust if, if you've done build well and have an invite. Um, participate in small group, serve, fill needs now, uh, disciple one another, encourage one another, build one another up. Uh, all of those things must continue. And, um, and then as we get closer and the adjustments have to come, we'll make those adjustments, but we're going to be so much better positioned as a body if we collectively press on forward faithfully as a church body as we get closer to this than if we start to, to split off or just get in um, what's called like a linger mode um, where we're just kind of waiting, you know, a holding pattern, holding pattern. That, come on, somebody could have helped me with that over here. <laughs> holding pattern. If we just get in a holding pattern, we can't fall into that. <laughs> yeah. You like holding patterns? Oh, linger mode. Linger mode. Yeah. I'll just make, I'll make up something that works. So, uh, yeah, we don't want to get in a holding pattern. We need to, we need to press forward faithfully and intentionally and just keep continue. That's continue to be the body. That's only going to aid us as we prepare for this. So pursue active obedience to faithful body life. Pray, pray and pray some more, please pray for your elders. Um, this is our first attempt at a church plant in this way. Um, we don't have all the answers. We have more than we need in God's word to know how to press forward. But practically, as we press forward with the priorities that God calls us to that we can't waver in, there's a lot of decisions that we just simply have to navigate as we consider things like which elders are going and how many people do we think is a good amount to send and where are we going to meet and different things like that. Pray for us. Um, God has been so kind to grant to us just sweet unity as we've talked about these things, but we still have a long road ahead of us. And so pray, pray for wisdom, pray for uh, unity, pray for just provision from the Lord to provide what we need to be able to, to go and do this well and what Grace Bible Church needs to be able to fill the holes that are left behind. Um, pray, for, pray for holiness. Uh, I'm sure all of you at some point have been faced with a decision that felt overwhelming in the moment. And then you kind of realized as you got through it that far more important than the final decision was just simply your conduct in that process. And, and that absolutely stands true for us in this. More important than the timing, even more important than just planting a church, um, is for us to individually and then thus corporately be holy and pleasing to God. If we plant a church but we're a wreck and constantly sinning before the Lord, that will not be successful. But if, if we end up not planning a church, but we're really godly in the process <laughs> as we wait, that we can trust God with that. We can trust God with that outcome. But, but we just have to be committed to pleasing the Lord in this process, which is just going to require a lot of patience with one another. It's going to require that with the elders as we labor with one another to make decisions and work through different details. But it's also going to require that with the elders, with the body, and particularly you all with us, um, just being patient with us. And we, we might make decisions that don't make sense in your mind or you don't understand. And just know that uh, there's a lot of considerations that go into every decision. And we are all unquestionably committed to the same thing, which is glorifying God um, and seeking to make much of Christ. And so those are some things for you to be thinking through. A couple other questions. Um, Financial needs for the church plant, we're gauging that. There's nothing um, unique to do to give to the church plant. 
Uh, and yet there will be startup costs that we'll need and uh, we'll be working through what that budget will look like where we're, we're starting that process. And we'll, we'll just keep you posted on that. But if you're wondering, is there something I can do? There will be needs. Uh, we'll keep you informed on that. But at this point, there's nothing specific to do in regards to, to giving. Kind of as we wrap up this morning, this is weighty and the elders realize that. I, I don't think there's been something in my life that I've been um, as excited about and as sobered by as this, as this endeavor. Julie and I have talked over the years about what it would look like being sent out from this church. And, and really, there's just no category where the thought of not being a part of Grace Bible Church is appealing to us because we so, so, so love this church. We love you all. And the thought of being sent out is incredibly painful because of the impact of something like this inevitably on, on relationships. And we just know the fact that we're doing this brings a weight to each of your lives as well. And relationships will be impacted by those who go and those who stay and friendships that have been invested in for years will be impacted. It, it, it just happens. And, and we won't lose friendships, um, but there is something different when you're part of different church bodies. And, and we recognize that. The elders recognize that. We feel the weight of that. Um, and, and if you felt up to this point like, man, everybody's talking about excitement about the church plant, but man, this is really hard. Just want you to know, we recognize that it's hard. We recognize that it's weighty. We recognize that friends will have to make decisions about what church they're a part of, that, that siblings will have to make those types of decisions. Not me, because my brother's coming, but, <laughs> but he might <laughs> and others. Um, but, but also parents and children, um, some of, my, some of my closest friends who have provided the most intimate care through life's most significant challenges, I'm no longer going to be a part of the same church as them. And that's weighty. And that's hard. But as, as we've talked and has been our refrain for some years now, hard is not bad. And we believe wholeheartedly this is worth it. If there's something to endure sorrow, hardship, pain, difficulty for, to multiply churches, to bring the truth of the gospel of God's word to communities, to build up saints for the work of ministry, what an endeavor, what a privilege, even in the midst of the weightiness, even in the midst of the difficulty, even in the midst of the implications, we will not regret the cost of this endeavor for one nanosecond, 10,000 years from now. This is a, this is a good, a good endeavor. And, and we have to think about it that way. We have to seek to do this well, and we have to seek to do this again. We have to send Omri, Lord willing, to New Orleans and those that would go with him. What a privilege to participate in that endeavor. And Lord willing, having two churches this like-minded, this close of proximity, this intimate knowledge and care for Omri, desire to support him will only support and strengthen that. And as more men are trained and raised up through TES and the local churches and in this valley, we'll be able to, Lord willing, just keep doing this over and over again until the Lord, until the Lord comes. And to, to do this is a privilege. So, as I mentioned, the elders are available. Um, I, I've, I've worked hard to share the information that we have at this point with you this morning. Um, it's going to be a, a fluid process where we'll be learning as we go and finding out more information. But if there's clarity that you're seeking or additional questions that you have, you can come to any of the elders. We'd love to be available for you. And, um, and we're just really thankful for your participation and your commitment to want to join in this in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. So with that, let's pray and, um, 
and then we'll continue on in our, our morning together. Lord, thank you for this time to share these things. Again, the fact that we get to concern ourselves with, with such things is, is just too wonderful for us. We're so grateful. And Lord, we pray that you would bless this. Lord, that you would grow and mature and enable Grace Bible Church to all the more just continue to thrive as a mature body. Um, and Lord, we pray for the church plant, Lord, that you would use it as a means to building up more and edifying those who go and equipping those who go and ministering in, into a location that is just in need, uh, in need of the gospel, in need of the true gospel, thinking about the message that is, is so present in the Southeast Valley, in the Gilbert area, the heresy that is advocated for door to door and, um, and those who embrace it and are, are going to, um, if you don't intervene, endure eternal judgment and damnation and wrath for their defiance of you. Lord, it's heartbreaking. I pray that you would use the, the church that we plant, Lord, to be a, a light, a beacon in a dark area that thinks of themselves as being bright and yet is completely lost in darkness. Give us courage for this. Give us endurance and steadfastness. And give us wisdom. We pray that you would be glorified in all of these things. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.